Ah, right, so here we are, on the way up the rough side again. We're a couple of miles out from Bellingham, in between the rain. Whoop. Just. Just. Got my hammocks in the bag, got some tarpaulins, a tent for the dogs, wherever they are. <laughs> I'm going to try to find myself a little place to come. And of course, there's that lovely spring water. Oh, That's what we're going to go and find. That lovely spring, spring water. All about it. Well, I have gone for a nice walk. We'll keep you posted. So last week, right, walked along here, come to the same place, and my little neck snooze, had my back pocket ready to stick on and off, getting hotter and cooler. We're walking along, what do we see? Ah, me soaking wet snooze! Get in. <laughs> <laughs> I was in the forest there just as the rain started. Got a little bit wet, but um, nothing to be concerned about, we'll dry off. I saw a stay near a bothy, near a rough side bothy. I've stayed in there quite a few times, knowing the location for about maybe eight or nine years now. All the locations are available on the Mountain Bothy's website. As long as you can take coordinates and put them on a map and read a map, you can get yourself at any bothy like. Um, but at the moment, it's just worth noting, a bit of a play as well, like all the bothies are closed. Um, so the MBA, the Mountain Bothy Association, who, alongside a team of volunteers, maintain and run these bothies, they decided to close all the bothies. Although they can't physically lock the doors, put a bolt on a door or a padlock, someone's going to kick it off. Um, even with the signs that have been put up, people just ripped down and burnt and that. But it's a bit class if people respect the MBA's wishes. And obviously the MOs, the maintenance officers for the bothies, put in a lot of hard work. And if we're if the bothies have been abused during these times, landowners might revoke the, um, the agreement to let, to let we use that land. It would be a bit of a shame. And I see loads of tinkers on YouTube and on the forums and that, seeing the garden wild camping and the garden camping in a bothy. Well, being a bothy isn't camping to start off with. And it's clear that other bothies are closed, so it's like, just didn't use them. Hopefully, in a couple of months, we can get back to bothying. But right now, it could put in jeopardy um, the use of bothies. That would be a crying shame. They've been open since what? The 60s? Well, obviously longer, but the MBA formed in the 60s to start maintaining them properly. If you don't know what a bothy is, get on the Mount MBA website, Mountain Bothies Association. Donate to them, subscribe as a member, and learn a bit about bothies because they're around the fantastic things. Uh, many a good night spent in a bothy. But tonight, we're close to one, but we'll be in my hammocks. Um, just stay out of the bothies. <laughs> Take your hammock or your tent. What you got there, Alex Stokesy? Oh, you know <laughs> what I got here. Tell us, God, clear. Spring, spring water. Spring water, spring, spring water. Me spring water. <laughs> Stokesy. Harry. Run. Oh, right down. Down here as well. Go, 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 go. Take off me, Harry. Go, 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 go. <laughs> Stoxy, hey, yeah. run.
So, now that we're finished running around like children, because we got a little bit excited, we're going to find somewhere to stay for the night. We found the first location, thought it was lovely. A bit. Walked a little bit further in and found this lovely sheltered location. As you can see around us, there's a few fallen trees in the background, creating a bit of shelter. Idea is we're going to create a parallel system with a fire in the middle. Wrap a tarp around the outskirts to protect from one side. Because it's been a bit breezy the last couple of times and I think we'll fancy a warm night tonight. That's why we'll treat ourselves to a bit of warmth and heat. But anyway, that's the plan. All goes to plan, all goes accordingly. Fingers crossed. Definitely not going to go according to plan, but we can try. Peace. So we're just pitching up and we're getting eaten alive by midges. Standard crack this time of the year. So while Dougie pitches up a top, gets a bit of a rain cover on the go. See them all there, there's like what, half a dozen there on my arm, just eating us alive there. Uh, so I'm gonna get a little fire going, try and smoke them out. What I've done though, is I've brought myself a little bag of kindling this week, cause last week I would get a fire going, always get a fire going, that's fair enough. But sometimes you just wanna make it easy for yourself, since we knew we didn't have to go and collect water this week. I mean, the wood's very saturated, so you know, why make things difficult for yourself when you can have a Cut a corner when you need to, swiftly, like I'm doing now. The style I'm going for is just a Scandinavian type, just a wood drop. So yes, anyway, I'm going to get this going so that I can get stop scratching myself and getting eaten alive. Hi. So as you can see, just got your fat stick on top, just here. And all this will burn away and it'll just drop through and fuel the fire once again. And you just do the same again, just build it on top. And it just dro keeps dropping through and fueling itself. Lovely little easy to go fire. So what we're going to do now is, as you can see, like I said before, all the wood's very saturated and it needs a lot of attention. And I just want to get my hammock up and get sorted out for the night. So what I'm going to do, or what I've started doing, is just digging a little tunnel to create just a, a nice air draft, as opposed to standing here blowing on it constantly. Uh, yeah, and that should help keep it going while we get set up for the night. Oh look at that, instantly made a difference, lovely. Ah, it's dinner time. Got a fire going, a camp set up, show you around properly in the morning, where my lid's on. But got myself set up. Still she's getting spring some water. spring water. <laughs> some of that spring water. And the dogs have got their tent as well. So it's dinner time. So what's in the pot? Fry it with an onion, add some stock, and I've got a bag here of corn mince. I don't eat meat. Um, there's a big bit of protein there, and then a few mushrooms to put in, some noodles, and look at that straight from the garden of the year, um, some sweet corn that I've been growing. I'll boil up some water and have that with it. Some tomato mascarpone and chopped tomatoes. Some chopped tomatoes. And we'll mark that together. Sizzle it all up on the fire. We'll add a little bit of rain, but that's alright. Right. There's some browned off mushrooms and onions. I'll add the mince to the pot. And once these sticks set are hot, we'll get back to um, embers. And that's gonna obviously be hot enough to cook on. But most importantly, we stuff to dry. <laughs> We're going to change the place of the fire pit. Yeah, and please directly. Are we, dude? Because Stokes, he's put his tarp up as well. The smoke's just going into his tarp and absolutely choking at the hammock. And it's best not to have it right underneath the tarp, I suppose. It can melt. Um, so we're going to move the fire pit just out here where it's open. So the smoke goes straight up. Yeah, nice bit of sweet corn. Lovely. And there we have it. Nice bolognese. Mix in with some noodles. There's some sweet corn down there. Lush. Just what we need after shelter building. Bit of walking. 
bit of excitement. Let's chill out with a bit of a um, bit of scram. Base cam. Hello. Mm. You just asleep in the fire pit, Gus. No. <laughs> yeah, boys. Hello, duty. Come on, shift, 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 shift. Let me out. Let me out. So, yeah. Good morning, guys. One of the most exciting things about doing a hammock camp, especially when there's two of you, is waking up in the morning and actually discovering how you set up. I love waking up and just seeing what the, what the camp looks like. Slept pretty well last night. Didn't wake up until like half six this morning. I needed to go for a week. And apart from that, I was pretty comfortable, snug. And kind of got around with this hammock. It's got like a double skin, DD hammock. Something like put an inflatable mat. Underneath there, and I've got a nice thick all season sleeping bag which I weighs a bit more on the way in, but um, I'd rather carry the extra weight because then I'm, I'm just much more comfy. Gone are the days when I got out with a little backpack and a knife, <laughs> I'd rather be nice and comfy. And this fly net, I'd never used a fly net before, and I'd zip down and I'm sat in a hammock, and the net makes a nice little enclosed space for us. So, Dog sleep. Let's do he sleeps. There's an extra tarp for wind protection. That's what I was seeing. You see, I've got the tarp. I've got the tarp. It's like a diamond shape. Just a little battery there. Got the uh, lime hammocks and chat. And it did rain last night, the rain picked up. And this is a good little test. So I was set up, and I love these ridge lines. When you put up a hammock, make a ridge line, just a spare bit of paracord that's gotten above your hammock. And you can hang all your stuff on to dry. These are my pouches for my backpack, the unzip from my backpack. And I need some hang stuff in. 
the top part, uh, hang it on, you can hang stuff in. And you just keep everything off the ground and now everything is. Time for breakfast. Got some oats to start off with. Well, it's not what we'll eat first, but we'll start these off first. Put them on the fire, let them bubble away, and let's pick them up and have some porridge. And a go with the porridge is some honey. And this is the best honey I've ever had, because it comes from my bees. As well as enjoying camping in the allotment, I've got some beehives. Um, so two, three times a year, I'm able to harvest some honey from their hives so I've always got loads of honey there's some um, videos of me bees on the channel on the Pure Buzzing channel so check them out let us know what you think um, but honestly this runny honey this is the early honey as well so it's from a lot of the tree pollen it's so runny and sweet and tasty it isn't as floral as the later honey that I get in the year but it's lush and some of that and some of that it's just meant to be I write. Pure buzzing. Uh, so while the porridge is <coughs> bubbling away on the fire, we're going to have some eggs first, some scrambled eggs. And these eggs come from my hens. These were laid in the past couple of days, so they're nice and fresh. Breakfast in bed, Joe. Breakfast in bed! Dougie's just made up some sterling looking scrambled eggs. Fresh from the coop. Should be lovely. There we go, it's a two course breakfast this morning. Had with eggs. Now it's time for some porridge. With some lovely sweet honey in there. It doesn't get better than this, like. Go on a little bit more, why not? Yes it does. Ooh, and a flapjack. <sighs> oh lovely. That's gonna need a little bit more honey in there then. <laughs> there we go. Look at that man. Breakfast of, breakfast of champions. Some of Dougie's homemade honey as well. Beauty. This should get with home married. Oof. Alright guys. here leave no trace the perfect crime we'll be even collecting more sticks and logs and branches and tying them around where we've been kicking with feet and we've had a, a fire and that I reckon again if you're walking through here doesn't look any different to 
and the other spots but it does they all look different <laughs> all got sticks in different ways but class start walking back soon got all bags ready There's another night well spent in the woods. It's always a different sort of setup for your camp. It was lovely, what a nice spot. Yeah, a bit windier towards like the middle of the night to morning. But um, it was lush. We stayed dry even though it was like, it was raining pretty hard last night at times. And um, shelter stood the test. Good stuff, good stuff. Now we're just uh, walk back to the car. Probably another 20 minutes ish on a walk but it's a nice walk and um, yeah until the next one yep. yo I'm um, just coming near Ballingham by a really late start I slept in like totally and um, so I'd be like half an hour 40 minutes by the time I go back to Newcastle and drop Stokes off. Um, I'll see you soon. Love you. Bye bye. Mwah.